Jesus and King Matt's speaker. Um, and he's here to talk to us about social authenticity online on social media. Uh, please join me in welcoming Matt on the left. All right, thank you for that introduction. Uh, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about social change and then innovation, obviously, right? That's the theme. Uh, but before we get into anything, here's a picture of me. <laughs> uh, this is, you know, as you can tell, kind of, kind of weird, um, very interesting picture. But the reason I bring it up is because that picture still exists on my Facebook profile right now. Anybody who wants can go look at it, laugh at it, comment on it, and make fun of me. Uh, it's the same with this picture, which is currently on my Instagram profile. And here come my favorite two, uh, this one, <laughs> and finally the best of them all, uh, this one. So clearly, you know, these are some interesting, weird things. Um, obviously, I posted them quite a while ago, and I think, you know, when we're at a younger age, we kind of, we lack a bit of common sense that one develops, you know, when they grow up. At this point, I think I have that common sense and should be, you know, smart enough to know these aren't great pictures to have of yourself online. But for some reason, I still haven't deleted them. They exist right now. Anyone can go find them. So the question I'm going to kind of ask myself right now is why? Why do I still let everybody look at these ridiculous pictures? Well, the reason is I think there's something beautiful about what I like to call authenticity. You know, the fact that I decided to post these pictures, I don't know why I did, but now that I did do it, I'm going to go ahead and honor what I did, and I'm going to embrace that because there's something beautiful about the process of growing up and the interesting decisions we make during that process. So this all revolves, once again, like I said, around authenticity, specifically social authenticity. So what do I mean when I say that? Well, it's really social authenticity online or social network authenticity. It's the idea of your social networks being a genuine representation of who you are as a person. So I want to talk about the way that this applies to the changes that are actually happening today. So as you can see, a social network profile is really supposed to be a representation of who we are as a person. It's supposed to be a showcase of us, of our lives. But the problem is this hasn't been the case lately. Because of reasons that I'll explain very soon, instead of being a, a representation of us, it's representing a version of us, a perfected, highly sculpted and edited and chosen version of us that's really not who we are. You know, we use filters and we edit and we select and we think too much about what's going on and it ends up not showing our true selves. So in order to kind of explain this even further, I wanted to get some facts. But instead of, you know, looking online and stuff, I thought the best way to do this would to be actually to turn to my peers to show how much this problem is actually happening in our community. So um, here are several facts that I could gather um, just by surveying people around me. Uh, the first is these long photo sessions that people will take. If someone's on an outing or with a group of friends and they know they want to post a picture lately, what they'll do is they just take pictures and pictures, you know, it can get up to hundreds of them trying to find the perfect photo. They'll just take as many as they want and then later sort through trying to find the perfect way to represent what was happening with them. And this is a problem because it's causing so much anxiety about finding the perfect photo. The next is um, just under 40% uh, percent of the people I asked admitted to taking 40 minutes or, or more editing the pictures that they take for Instagram. So you know, that means that they're taking you know, all this time just worried and focused about making sure that their picture is going to turn out all right or OK, that it's going to fulfill whatever requirements they think are necessary to you know, be accepted socially. And finally, we have that people will take um, retakes on Snapchat up to 15 times, you know, going again and again, trying to make sure that you look OK and that you represent yourself well. So, I want to look at, you know, these are really interesting things and it's, I think it's pretty powerful to know, you know, how much we care about this. So the question is why? Why are we doing this? Why do we care so much about what people think? Well, it all comes from what I like to call social anxiety online. So once again, um, I looked to all my peers and I asked them some questions um, about social anxiety. And this is really going to explain the problem, why we're focusing so much on, on you know, what our photos look like and such. So the first thing that happens is um, after somebody posts a picture, uh, about 50% of the people admitted to checking their phone more than 10 times within the first hour of posting a picture online. That means they're incredibly you know, concerned and anxious with the feedback they're getting and comparing the number of likes they get to other people's photos and making sure it's going to be enough. Then the next thing that happens is if they don't feel like they have enough likes, they just don't think it's been doing well enough, 
within the first few hours, people will actually take down their photos. Um, about 40% of people said that they have considered taking down a picture at some point because they didn't think it was good enough. And then finally, we also have another instance of people taking down photos. Um, over 70% of the people I asked admitted to having um, taken down an old photo at some point in their life. So you know, those beautiful pictures of, that you saw of me earlier, they wouldn't be there if, they, if I did that. So it's really important to understand that people are very concerned about perfecting their social networks and making sure that their profile is just a perfect version of who they actually are. So now I've described some very interesting things, but the question is, you know, is that really a problem? Sure, we're focused on being perfect and everything, but maybe that's okay. Well, let me explain why that's definitely not okay. See, the thing is, we're getting incredibly caught up with an, a big action of comparing ourselves. Everything we do is making sure we're as good as or good enough as everybody else. And it gets to the point where it's absolutely unhealthy. In fact, it leads to an unhealthy obsession of people worrying too, too much about what they're doing online. It gets to the point where, according to the New York Times, use of social media can actually lead to clinical depression. This is a problem. So in order to solve that, a company called Beam has made an app. Uh, if you know me, you've probably heard me telling everyone, go follow me on Beam, follow me on Beam, because I think it's a really great solution to a lot of these problems. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to go over every single kind of technical aspect of Beam, and then explain the way that that tries to do two things. The first thing it does is it eliminates anxiety around posting on social networks, and the second thing it does is it encourages authenticity. So this is what Beam likes me. By the way, that's my username up on the upper left. If you want to follow me on Beam, go ahead. I make beautiful content um, every day. Um, but more importantly, I'm going to talk about the aspects of Beam. So the way you start making a Beam is you just cover up the proximity sensor that's on the top of your phone. And that's this little thing right here, and it measures how far things are away. So when you cover your hand, it knows to start recording, and it'll look like this. It's just a black screen, and it says recording. So we're probably not used to seeing, excuse me, probably not used to seeing things like this when we're recording on social media because you know, usually most, most social networks have us always looking at our phone, making sure what we're doing is good enough and watching, 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 and it creates this anxiety around the content we're capturing. Instead, Beam just turns to a black screen and you simply point your phone where you want to record. This is really helpful because it reduces the anxiety of making sure what you're recording is okay. All you do is just stay in the moment, stay in whatever experience you're having, and just record it as you're going. The next thing I want to talk about is that after four seconds of cover covering up that proximity sensor, the beam just goes out for everybody to see. This is my favorite part about beam, because after you're done recording, you don't get to check it and watch it before you send it. See, with things like Snapchat and Instagram, we're so used to taking pictures and retaking and retaking, and making sure we look perfect and we didn't mess up. And this is absolutely eliminated with beam, because it just sends right out, and you don't need to be worried about whether you look good or not, because it goes automatically. It reduces the process of you know, trying again and again. Next um, is the form of feedback with Beam is very unique. Rather than having likes going on the entire time, there's something called reactions. See, on other social networks, these likes, they, they get us so anxious. We want to compare with other people and make sure we have you know, more than them or more than we got in our last photo, trying to make sure our follower ratio is correct and all that type of stuff. And Beam absolutely eliminates that too. Instead of having those likes, you have reactions. So as you see, if I were to click in the upper right corner by that five there, um, that would take me to my reactions. So this is my friend Eric here who, sent, who sent me a reaction to my Beam. The way it works is as he's watching a video, all he does is he taps a little reaction video, uh, sorry, a little reaction button, and it, go, it takes a picture of him for me to see. So instead of having likes and comments and stuff, this is a much more humane way of expressing reactions to what we think. You know, if he likes what I'm doing, he can give me a thumbs up or an A-OK, -okay. or maybe if he was angry at me or if he felt bad for what I was talking about, he might do a thumbs down or something else. Um, so that's a much nicer way. It kind of eliminates numbers. But while we're on the topic of numbers, there is one part of Beam that's kind of number-oriented. But it does it without creating anxiety, and that's what I like to call the statement. Um, if you look up here, right there, that statement there, I think it says 800 people have spent 17 hours and something minutes as you. So that's the way that Bing kind of lets you know the content you're creating is actually being watched. It's not going into a black hole somewhere, but it doesn't cause anxiety because there's no way to compare this with other profiles on Bing 
and it's not meant to make you compare yourself against other people. Instead, it's just letting you know that the content you're making is being enjoyed and being watched. Um, so, you know, Beam has a lot of great solutions to all of these things. I really enjoy it because it helps eliminate that anxiety and it encourages people to be themselves and be authentic on social media, thus eliminating these incredible problems with depression revolving around social media. This to me is a great thing because, you know, it just makes everybody be themselves in a really nice authentic way. But I would be ignorant to say that there aren't problems with Beam. Uh, the first two are kind of more technical and I thought I should mention them. Um, it's kind of difficult to point the camera well. As I said, you know, you can't see what you're recording, so sometimes you might just absolutely miss the subject or get your finger in the way. The next unfortunate part is that the raw style can kind of be limiting. Um, the entire time I've been criticizing filters and stuff, but for some people, like photographers, you might want to have a nice filter or do some more artistic editing to your photos. And at times, this can be a good thing. Beam doesn't allow for that, so that's just another limitation. But these are two kind of technical issues that can be easily overcome over time. You know, Beam is still a new app and they're changing, and it won't be long until these things are fixed. The major problem is authenticity can kind of be boring. You know, when you think about it, do we actually want to see legitimate pictures of what people are doing? Or could it be more enjoyable to watch, you know, a perfected version of someone's life? Yeah, this whole time I've been criticizing it, but sometimes it could be more entertaining. So that's kind of the fundamental issue with Beam that we all need to consider. So I'll leave you to think about that, but at the same time to think about how wonderful it is that we do have a route to get around all this depression and anxiety revolving social media. But I cannot end this talk without <laughs> Beaming, because I promised all my Beam followers that um, I would show them this, uh, this talk. Obviously, they all are big advocates of the app, and they would love to see this. So I leave you with, thank you very much for watching my talk, guys, and I hope you left with some very nice thoughts. Thank you very much.